Right, welcome back guys. This video we're going to dive into actually setting up a multi-sample oscillator patch and we're going to bring in some sounds that I've sampled myself and create a preset for the oscillator. Set up loop points and root keys and so forth. Right, so I've sampled a synth pad for this. Um, I typically sample a lot of my stuff through my machine uh, using the auto sampler. It's a really handy little feature that makes sampling multiple keys very, very easy. Uh, you can do this with hardware or software. Uh, if you have something like Sample Robot, that's another great little tool that will uncomplicate the process of actually sampling multiple samples like this. But you can also do that manually, and once you have your samples, you're ready to import into Anna 2. So what I've done in this case is I've sampled the synth pad uh, with a single velocity, and we've done it over uh, with a stride of 12, so essentially from C1 to C6. A stride of 12 meaning that we sample one sample and then stride up tw 12 notes. So C2 would be the second one, C3, and so forth. I'm just going to grab my samples now and we're going to just bring them into Anna. You have the option here to copy it to your user library for Anna. Um, I'd suggest you do this just so you don't end up with samples being moved afterwards and then delinked. Uh, however, you can save them once you've saved the patch. Um, and then again, you'll have this option to. Uh, consolidate the files within the Anna uh, directory structure. With the option here to select folder, you can also just create a new one and say pads and I'll say OK and then say yes. You then get this option to map to root keys. Uh, we're going to do that. Uh, you can also just have them spread evenly over the entire keyboard. Uh, but we'll just go with root keys and there our samples are all in. So now that we have our samples imported, we need to do a little bit of work setting up root keys and just organizing things a little bit here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just highlight all of these. And this is nice. You can uh, at any time highlight these and apply uh, edits to all the samples at the same time. And we're going to right click here and we can say sort by name, for example. You see everything is nicely ordered now, which is going to keep things nice and tidy. Um, you do have an auto uh, mapping function down at the bottom to detect from the file, but I'm going to quickly just set this up manually to show you guys how this works. Uh, you have a number of other options here, sort by name descending, use loop points from file. Uh, that's if you have loops embedded in the WAV file that you're importing. Uh, key ranges, that's what we've just done now, map around the root keys. We're going to come back to that in just a second as well. And then you can also show an explorer to see where your samples are being stored. Let's quickly click on the top here. We're going to go to root key. And now we need to set the sample root. So the root key is the original pitch that we sampled this single sound at. Obviously, I've named these here. So we've got synth pad C1. We're going to bring this down to our C1, which is going to be its root key. C2 down here, C3, C4, C5, and all the way up to C6. So now we have the root keys correctly set up. We can head back to the zone section here. Just select all of these once again, and right click, and again, we're gonna map around the root keys, but now we actually have the root keys set to their correct values. So when we do this, you'll see that Anna 2 automatically places them on the root key and then extends those sample ranges out. So the root key would be in the middle here and then it extends up and down. Uh, you can also choose to extend that down only. You'll see that changes slightly. So it's only sending these downwards, um, but we're gonna opt for the other version that we have there. So we'll go map around the root keys. It'll stretch it both up and down equally until it meets the next sample. So at this stage, we actually have a playable patch here. So we can, All our uh, samples are sounding correctly in the re correct pitches, but there's a couple of problems here uh, that we're gonna have to solve. So first things first, I didn't normalize these samples when I sampled them. Um, so what you can do is we can then again, select all of these, come over to the samples tab, and you have a gain function here. So we can gain the sample up slightly. That's a more respectable level now. That all seems to be functioning fine. Now the next issue here, we've sampled a pad and a pad sound, we wanna generally have that be held down uh, without it ending. Currently, if we play this now, well, 
You'll see the sample runs out eventually. I did sample quite a, a decent length there, about 10 seconds, that sample. Um, but it's running out. So if we hold that chord down, eventually we're going to end up with silence. So what we need to do is set loop points for our samples. Now, a really cool thing with Anna 2, again, is that you can set loop points for all the samples simultaneously, which is a really nice feature. Uh, sometimes you may want to dive into the sample to find zero crossings or to really kind of um, be quite precise with your loop points. If you want to do that, you can zoom into the sample here and see exactly where you are making start points and loop points. Um, but I'm not going to be so specific in this case. Uh, this should work really well with just a crossfade. So we can just sort of get a general area where we want the loop to, uh, to occur and then just crossfade the ins and outs. So let's... Um, Select all our samples here. Uh, we're not going to bother with the start time. We do need to enable the loop, so we're going to click on loop down at the bottom. You'll see the sample gets highlighted in blue like that. And this is your loop range. Now all we need to do is adjust the start and end times for the loop. So we'll adjust the start to get a little bit of the attack in there, and we can start looping from about here. And maybe a little bit more just to cover the crossfade. And then the loop end we can bring back, and we'll loop this section in the middle here. Now, currently, if you play this, let's just find one of these samples. There we go. You can hear there's a bit of a click there, which we don't really want. So what we can do in this case, because we've just kind of done quite a rough loop here, we can turn up the crossfading. Uh, and the crossfading will, as you can see, fade these into each other as they reach the end of the loop. I may also just bring the start point up a little bit so we can get sort of a, a longer crossfade. Uh, we'll go with something like that. Uh, now you can see that these ones don't have the crossfade setting on them, but what we can do also is to just uh, right click on this one and we'll say apply settings to all samples. And we now have the same crossfade settings for all of these. You don't actually have to have those all selected there to do that. You can just apply them after you set up one new point. Um, so if we now check out, let's go to our C3 sample. We have a smooth loop there, no audible clicks at all, which is great for our pad sound. Everything should be functioning correctly now. And we're basically done here. So now you can head over to the synth part and apply some effects and such and build your patch around these multi samples. Um, so before we finish off here, uh, once you've done this and you're all set up and you're happy with the sort of raw sample data that you've got in here, we can go to the top here. There's also an optional import here if you don't drag and drop, but we can now go and save as, and we'll save this as protopad1 and select the user folder for the multi-sampled patch. Uh, we'll just stick this in general, that's fine. And if you haven't imported the samples, you can do this again, yeah, import the samples to your user library. Click OK, and done. So we've created our first multi-sample oscillator patch for Anna 2 using the new features uh, from here. You can load this up at any time into your sample oscillator and use that in your sound design. Cool, let's move on to the next video. We're gonna get a little bit more in depth in the sampling and bring in some velocity layers as well. I'll catch you in the next one, cheers. Thanks everyone for watching, we really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video then smash a like and if you want to be notified about new videos hit the subscribe and notification buttons.